Bill Neckar, I guess I'll start the obvious question. I think your presence here says something, but are you going to definitely play in the bowl game? Have you made a decision about your future? I am playing in the bowl game. Um, that's one thing that's for sure. Um, I think it's important to end off the season on the right note uh, with a win against a really good team. Um, and I'm excited to, you know, have another chance to be on the field with my brothers. As of my future, I'm not, I'm totally undecided, so. Mecca, just what was it about, you know, this game that's important to you to play in no matter what you decide to do afterwards? Um, I feel like every chance you get to step on the field um, is something you shouldn't take for granted. Um, playing football, we're blessed to be able to do so. You never know when an injury might come or, uh, you know, your opportunities to play with some of your best friends might run out. So um, just getting an opportunity to go down to a great venue in Dallas um, and play against an opponent that's really good um, is a blessing in itself. So it's something I didn't want to pass up. Um, and it's just another opportunity to showcase my abilities. What's the mood of a team been like as you guys have started preparing for a Cotton Bowl? Um, we've been really focused. We know they're a good team. <coughs> um, and we've been, you know, we've been locked in. We've been moving forward. Um, I can't really say too much. Yeah. Look forward to the game. Mecca, as far as the other decision, what are kind of the biggest factors that are still you're weighing there, like each side of it, I guess? What, what's, what's still out there that you're trying to decide between? Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of factors that go into it. Um, as far as the things I'm deciding between, um, that's something that I've kind of just been working through with, you know, my corner, my, my family and all that type of stuff. Um, stuff that I don't necessarily want to get into right now. But, um, you know, there's positives on both sides. There's negatives on both sides as well. So um, it's definitely a decision that um, is going to be important. But it's nothing that um, the people here at Ohio State have, won't help me uh, with. Did you think you would get to this point and have a more definite decision as you kind of envisioned coming into this year? And did the fact that you encountered an injury and things like that, did that complicate this for you? Um, I mean, that's unfortunate um, to say the least, but um, ultimately I put my trust in, in something that's above me and that's Jesus Christ. Um, I believe his plan is sovereign, his plan is perfect and his will is always gonna come to fruition. So my injury is something that was um, ordained and it's something that um, later down the, the line, I'll be able to see the reason for. Um, and I feel like the lessons you get from tribulations that you face, um, you might not always get them right away, but um, once you recognize them, um, you realize what a blessing it was. I wonder what your thoughts are on, on Kyle entering the transfer portal and, and playing presumably with Devin Brown at, at the Cotton Bowl and mm -hmm. possibly Lincoln. Yeah. Um, Kyle's one of my best friends. So um, in that regard, it kind of hurts to see him go, but. On the other side, I'm so excited for him. I mean, he's going to have an ama amazing future. Um, he's a competitor. He's wherever he goes, he's going to make a direct impact. So um, I couldn't be more happy for him, more excited for him for the step forward. Um, unfortunately, you know, he won't be able to play, you know, with me. Um, so that kind of sucks. He's one of my best friends. I think he's a great quarterback. But um, you know, I'm just super excited for him. And as far as Devin goes, um, we always know he. We always knew um, he's been ready. Um, even when you know Kyle was injured or something like that, and if Devin had to come in, we knew he was going to get the job done. So it's no different with the Cotton Bowl. Um, and Lincoln is a young guy who has a lot of experience, or not a lot of experience, but a lot of talent. Um, and you know, once he combines experience with that and he starts to learn the game a little more, um, he's going to be something really special too. With, with From your point the, of view, go ahead. with the way that Devin or Lincoln, or whoever the quarterback is, plays in that game, would that have any impact on your decision if they play, let's say, really well? Okay. Um, I, I trust in the coaching staff that they're always going to provide good quarterback play. I mean, it's Ohio State. Uh, people can say what they want about Kyle. We went 11 and one. We had a great season. Um, unfortunately, we lost, you know, to the team up north. Um, but, you know, you can't really discredit the things that he did. Um, we had a Belindikoff winner. You can't just have that with an, a terrible quarterback, you know. So um, there's not too much to be said about the quarterback play. I think it's always going to be top tier at Ohio State. From your point of view, what did uh... What does Devin bring to the table, and how close was it, do you think, in August in that battle? From yeah. your point of view, Mecca? Um, You know, I'm not bashing Kyle, but something that Devin has that he doesn't is a little bit more mobility. Yeah. Um, we always, you know, joke with Kyle about stuff like that, but um, Devin really um, has a knack for extending the play um, after it's broken down. So that's something that's um, ultra valuable, especially when you're playing in matchup games, because those big plays often come from broken down plays. It's not something you scripted, um, it's just the reaction of, you know, the players that are around you. Um, so the ability to ex extend the play is a trait that's um, really, um, it can help a quarterback a lot. So. Yeah, and how is he as a passer? How would you rate him? I mean, is, 
par excellence? Well, you know, what, what grade would you put on that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just made that part up. Yeah. No, I think he's a, he's a great passer. Um, he's a great improviser, a great field general. He's someone who uh, provides the offense with a lot of energy, which is huge at that position. Um, and, you know, he has a cannon too. So, you know, those deep balls down the field, he can really launch those as well. Yeah, have y'all flowed seamlessly to him in the pre-bowl practice? Him and Lincoln, I mean, it, you know what I mean? I mean, Kyle's moved on. I mean, mm -hmm. I, have y'all put that behind you and moved on too in that regard? Yeah, I mean, um, we, we all wish Kyle the best when he departed, but um, there's kind of no time to be sentimental or sad. It's always the next man forward mentality. Um, and as far as who's going to be at the quarterback position, you know, obviously the wide receivers don't really have too much say. It's going to be the coaching staff that does that. But whoever is back there, we know that they have the ability to get the job done. Uh, you guys, you, you and Marvin both had kind of your breakout in the Rose Bowl a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Do you see a similar trajectory for Carnell and, and Brandon this year? Yeah, I mean, I sure hope so. We have <laughs> we have huge hopes for both of the, those guys. Um, and, you know, zone six is a very touted, um, you know, position room. And I feel like they're going to continue to carry on the, the tradition. So I can't speak too much about what the Cotton Bowl is going to hold for them. I mean, we'll see when that date comes. But um, they're going to have their coming out, event uh, coming out party eventually. And, you know, they're both very special players. You and Marvin were kind of tied together, even in recruitment. Once you committed, it was like these two are going to be the next up. Carnell and Brandon have kind of been tied together the entire time. Carnell, you know, next for Marvin. Brandon, next for you. Uh, have you guys talked to those guys about carrying on the tradition that, that you guys have carry on? Um, I think it's one of those conversations that doesn't necessarily need to be spoken. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, we didn't have a direct conversation with Jackson, Chris, or Garrett, but we kind of knew what it was um, going into our sophomore seasons that we were going to be heavily relied on. Um, and in those moments, you really have to step up. So um, I have no doubt that they're going to be able to do that. Uh, they're both special talents, uh, both very charismatic. Um, they work hard. And, you know, they're special players. They're very talented. God has blessed them. Do you remember how eager you were Last two at questions. that point? I mean, in your career, when you were waiting for your spot? Mm -hmm. I going mean, into that Rose Bowl, yeah. do you remember what, what was it like? I mean, knowing you were going to play. Yeah, even even before my first game um, in my freshman year, I was just like super excited just to get on the field. You know, whether it was in the fourth quarter trash time, we were up by 50 points. I just want to be out there. Um, and I was always preparing myself, whether, you know, someone unfortunately went down or whatever the case may be. I was always ready for that moment. So I, I remember how eager I was, um, not just the Rose Bowl, but my sophomore year to get out there. Um, and I think that's something that they have, which is going to, you know, push them to limits beyond the region. Do you really think there's a chance for Barber to come back? Um, shoot, I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> you talk to him about it at all? I mean, you know, we talk, but that's, uh, you know, I don't want to put anyone's information out there. Mm -hmm. what, is that, so what does that mean for this room? Yeah, we've been shorted, I feel like, in the past. Um, there's been a couple people who haven't been invited, who had great seasons. Uh, the numbers are really there. But, um, you know, at Ohio State, we always feel like we have a chip on our shoulder. So just being able to take those home for, for Zone 6 is something that's huge. Um, it, we continue to stack the accolades, and we're going to do that for years to come. All right, Emeka, thank you.